of uh, Professor John Feigenbaum, who was also my PhD advisor. Um, Dr. John holds an assistant professor position at SUNY Buffalo, and he's currently on leave for postdoc uh, research at the DIMAX Center. Uh, his research interests are very broad, including security and incentives in data mining databases and wireless networks. And also, he's also interested in cryptography and game theory. Here's Dr. Thanks. <clears throat> So today is my great honor to give this talk at a series, <coughs> which is a prestigious place uh, in the security world. Uh, <coughs> uh, because I, I'm not feeling terribly well, so let me apologize in advance. If I make any errors, please forgive me. <coughs> so um, today, in my plan, there are actually two talks uh, depending on the time. The first one I will definitely cover is privacy enhancing key anonymization of uh, customer data, which will appear in uh, post 2005. Uh, if time allows, I will also present uh, uh, privacy preserving classification without loss of accuracy. Which, appear, which just appeared in SDM 2005. So both, both pieces of work were joint work with uh, uh, Zhicheng Yang and Rebecca and Wright. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so privacy enhancing key anonymization of customer data. So <clears throat> uh, first of all, why would you bother to study uh, this topic, right? So, what is key anonymization? Why is it useful? Okay, so let's consider a scenario of medical research, okay? So, <clears throat> here you can see a table. This is a table of um, uh, health information. So, each row contains the health information of a customer, okay? So, of course, <clears throat> you know, this table has to be made uh, public, at least um, it should be made public to the doctors, right? Um, so before it is made public, it, it is de-identified, which means all the identifiers of uh, the customers have been removed from the table to protect the customer's <coughs> privacy, okay? However, <clears throat> so we, we, we note that uh, uh, here we have some uh, privacy sensitive information, for example, the history of the illness, right? If we can link any row with, uh, with an individual who, 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 ha who is corresponding to this row, then, you know, for example, you can know uh, who has what kind of history of illness, then privacy is violated. So, so here, here we make it clear what, what kind of a security threat we have here, okay? So, so uh, you might wonder, uh, given, given the fact that the identifiers have been removed, how can you link a, a row to the corresponding individual? So the idea is that uh, we still have some attributes remaining, and these attributes are called quasi identifiers. For example, uh, date of birth and the zip code shown here, right? So consider a row, this row uh, emphasized here, right? So this row shows the, uh, the date of birth and the zip code of an individual, as well as his allergic information and history of illness. So this bad guy looks at this row and thinks, okay, I know Victor is the only person who, is, who was born on this date and uh, in this area of uh, uh, this zip code. So, so I can determine he, Victor is exactly the person corresponding to, to this row. And uh, now I know he has a history of a stroke. So this is too bad, and we definitely don't want this to happen. 
So to avoid this, <coughs> Samarati and uh, Sweeney propose a very powerful tool called k-anonymization or k-anonymity. <coughs> so the idea is that we can eliminate <coughs> such link from a row to the person through <coughs> quasi identifiers. So, for example, we have here we show two ways to 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 remove these uh, these links. So one is, in a, you you can see in the column of the date of birth, we suppress some entries. So we we replace these entries with with star. So that's called a suppression. Okay. The other method is uh, uh, called a generalization, which is illustrated in the column of zip code. So you generalize a, a zip code of 07029 to 0702 star. So which means anything, any zip code starts with 0702. Okay? So <clears throat> using all these kinds of methods, we can make a table k anonymous. So, <clears throat> what what is k anonymous? So, the formal definition is that for each value of quasi identifier attributes, either it appears for at least k times in the table, or it does not appear at all. Okay. So clearly, if a table has this property, we can ensure that <clears throat> each row of the table is hidden in at among at least k rows. Or in other words, each person involved is hidden in at least k peers. <clears throat> so this is the basic idea of k anonymity. Is that clear? Good. Okay, <clears throat> so k anonymity clearly k anonymity protects individual privacy. So taking a, if the bad guy we we just mentioned see this k anonymous uh, table, he has uh, no idea <coughs> which of the records uh, corresponding corresponds to Victor, and then you know he he was confused. <clears throat> so. K-anonymization as a very powerful tool has been studied extensively uh, by various researchers. <clears throat> but but, uh, uh, but uh, as far as, as we know, all these previous works are in the centralized model, which means <clears throat> we have a centralized uh, uh, authority, central authority, who takes the, the raw table as input and outputs a k anonymous table okay in this tape in this work we consider extending extending this tool to the distributed scenario so <clears throat> what's a distributed scenario suppose we have a number of customers and uh, we have a central miner, okay? Or oh, you can say it's not a necessary miner or a publisher, okay? So each of these customers holds one row of the table. And uh, the, custom, the customer is happy to submit his data to, to, 